Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make over 1 million meseta per hour free to play. Yes, you do not need premium in order to use this as you will be making raw meseta, so no market pass required. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. Now, the very first thing I want to go over is, of course, today's keyword. It's actually an April Fool's keyword, but it does work. And it is steamed underscore hams, all right? Once you type that, you're simply going to press escape, go to systems, go over here to get campaign items and receive item account. Now, once you're here, you're going to see there is the April Fool's Day 2024, where you do get three Rackby Shape Fritters, which is perfect because today is actually PSO2 day. As we can see here, April 1st, PSO2 day, where we get 50 Star Gems as well as two special scratch tickets. And to top things off, we also get the once a month special login gifts, where we get the 15 days material storage as well as five end color change passes. So pick that up as well. Now, with that out of the way, the next thing I want to go over is, of course, today is PSO2 day, which means that we do get the 50% increase exp earned as well as a 100 rare drop rate boost this is very important because the way that we're going to be making money is we are going to be farming in combat zones now before you guys think oh you're just going to farm in retem al -Noth. no retem al -Noth is no longer the king it has been overtaken by dex base Dex base only has one difficulty, all of the mobs are level 65, and you are going to be farming here for PSE bursts, and you will make minimum 1 million per hour to 1.2 million, depending on how geared you are and how many people you're playing with and how efficient you're doing things, but this is absolutely amazing. Versus in Retem al -Noth, if you played really well in an efficient group, you're making about 800,000 meseta. So how on earth are you making 400,000 meseta more per hour? Well, it's actually super interesting because as you can see over here on the top line, this is my dex base. This is a PSE burst all the way to the end right here after we kill the elite. And at the bottom line over here, which I'll drag up here, this one is actually Retem al -Noth all the way. This is our entire PSE burst. Now you're going to notice that I put a cut right here. And this is because this is when the PSE burst climax happens. And this is when the boss spawns. However, in the B-roll over here, you can see this is the dex base footage. And when we put it at the exact same cut on when Retem Al Notes PSE Burst ends, you can see we still have a little bit more of the PSE Burst gauge. And it actually ends here. So as we can see here, this is the PSE Burst Climax Index Base. And if we look at this time right here, that is an additional 10 seconds of PSE Burst. So if you are farming Index Base, every time you get a PSE Burst, you actually get 10 seconds more. Now, of course, you know, using my editing software to showcase this might seem a little bit confusing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make your life easy. I'm going to put a side by side comparison with a timer to just show you how long it takes to finish a PSE burst in Retem Al Noth versus how long it takes to finish a PSE burst in Dex Base. And you can see from this side by side comparison right now that it is 10 seconds longer in Dex Base. So that is one of the main factors on why Dex Base is better than Retem Al Noth because because every single PSE burst you get, you get 10 seconds longer to kill more mobs, which generates more raw meseta. Now, of course, if you have the auto sell feature, you're going to make even more money because remember the auto sell feature, you can stack meseta gains on top of that. All those meseta multipliers or boosters that you have, it actually applies to all the items that are auto sold versus if you sell them manually, that meseta gain does not apply to items which are sold manually. So this is a little bit of a pay to win edge that you can take advantage of if you do have uh, the auto sell feature. Remember, the mission pass actually gives you a bonus of them so if you haven't been using them at all you should have quite a few as you can see here i do have 21 auto sell items for one hour so if i pop all of these that means i actually get 21 hours of auto sell keep in mind that this does tick down when you are logged off so you don't want to waste these you kind of want to use them an hour at a time personally i like having them like this because that way it's not like the 24 hour booster where you pop it and it's like oh i have to commit so it's very important to take full advantage of this because remember when you do have the auto sell enabled every time it auto sells any trash items while you're farming in a pse combat zone or just anywhere the end meseta earned plus 50 percent 25 percent whatever will also apply to those items so you make even more money 
All right, with all of that said and done, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be gear. The gear itself, I do recommend LC capsules plus Tyrell capsules. This is pretty much the bare minimum that you should be going in. I know it might sound a little bit overkill. It's like they're level 65 mobs, you're level 85. Why do you need so much potency? Well, the thing is, Sega has implemented a damage scaling system. It's been in the game since forever, and it's kind of silly in my personal opinion, because if you take overpowered gear or if you take like high rarity weapons and high rarity armors into a low level combat zone your damage is actually scaled down for some reason i don't know why they do this but it is what it is and that is why you want to make sure that you go really overkill on your augments and your potency so you know lc capsules you get this for free you should have tons of these tyro capsules they're literally a thousand miss out on the market and most of you guys should be swimming in these anyway so it's very inexpensive to get a bunch of these so you just slap them onto your armors and then as for your weapon i do recommend either having a rare weapon a flugel guard weapon a melek weapon or a tisha weapon basically any of these four weapons and with like just full lc capsules and you should be pretty good however if you want to be a little bit cheeky you can use some lower rarity weapons because remember again we're fighting level 65 enemies and because of the way the damage scaling works if you use a low rarity weapon you actually deal a little bit more damage it's very counterintuitive however just keep in mind that you will need to spend the resources to get the weapon to plus 80 as well as your weapon potential to level 6 and then you just fill it up with like lc capsules and you'll be good to go um personally i really like the relic dependence the reason for this is because we actually get this extra explosion so it's like this area damage every 10 seconds you get this extra aoe explosion on the katana so you can farm things a little bit faster that way however to be really honest with you guys i think waker is probably the best class to farm here because you have that roar attack or that breath attack which just pierces through enemies it's very similar to like the talus attack where you just like aoe everything down really easily um obviously you can rock the rod as well with a forest class and just zonde everything down that works as well but you know you can always use these older weapons if you want to because the damage adjustment the damage adjustment is 75 percent to 100 percent so it's a lot easier to get 100 percent damage adjustment with potency floor which means that you always hit the same amount of damage every single time and that is actually uh pretty busted so if you do have some old weapons sitting around or if you're just like me and just for nostalgic reasons because remember this actually dropped for me way back in the retem days this katana holds a lot of value for me at least because uh, this was the first god tier weapon that i ever got in the game and uh it's freaking amazing so good memories over here i will probably be using my relic dependence over here and fully investing into it and uh, maxing it out with lc capsules you know i'm not gonna go crazy with xd capsules and all of that stuff because again you know we're killing level 65 mobs here so you don't need to hyper invest you can just use whatever gear you have right now but i just want to remind everyone that if you are using like a rare weapon or any weapon that is nine star rarity or above that you do want to make sure that it is first of all enhanced to level 80 weapon potential level 6 as well as filled with at least lc capsules and the same with your armors as well and that way you'll be able to farm deck space incredibly efficiently now as for the tactics used in deck space you're going to be using the old Retem I'll know tactic, all right? You're gonna be killing all the trash mobs until you fill it up to four bars and then clear the trial. That's pretty much how you do the PSE burst farming, at least at lower levels. So do not clear the trials until you filled up four of the bars for the PSE gauge. So that way, when you clear the trial, you get the PSE burst. So we're reverting back to that old strategy because uh, they took away Crimson Realm. And Sega, where's Crimson Realm? Where is it? Can I have it back, please? Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel, it really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video, hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye!